ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Sports Room, your host Robert. Alright, Impact Wrestling's annual Rebellion pay-per-view um, happened last night in Toronto, Canada. Um, we had some good matches. We had, they said for the first time ever, but I'm not sure about that, we had a two titles that were vacated due to injury, and we crowned two new champions due to that. Um, we had two pre-show matches to start. We had Champagne Singh and Sierra, and Sierra, 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 whatever, versus Ethan Rhino. And uh, Champagne Singh, Sign, and Shara, Shara got the victory. Um, it was an okay match. Ethan Rhino, they've kind of, in my opinion, lost the luster. Um, that match, I give it two and a half. It's like a six minute long match. And then we had the Impact Knockout Tag Team Pals on the line. We had the Covent, the current champions, Callan King and Taylor Wilde going up against Death Dolls, Jessica, with a K because she's sick, and Rosemary. Um, the Coven retained their tag titles. I give it two and a half as well. It was about nine minutes long on the pre-show. Um, the first match on the card was the Impact World Tag Team Championship in the Ultimate X match. I love Ultimate X with the right people. This did have the right people. It had the uh, ABC Club, uh, Ace Austin and Chris Bay, uh, going up against the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban, um, two guys who have made a career of Ultimate X matches. Um, Ace Austin and Chris Bay were the current Impact World Tag, Top, Tag Team Champions. Um, really good match. A couple big spots off the top. Um, fully expected this match to be good, which it was. The uh, champions, ABC, another Bullet Club, Ace Austin and Chris Bay retained their tag titles. I gave it a four star. Um, next up, we had a... Four on three handicap match. We had Dirty Dango, Joe Henry, and Santino Morella, the dictator of authority, going up against the Zine, Angels, Callahan, Diener, and Khan. <sighs> this match, um, yeah, it, it was okay. It was nothing spectacular whatsoever. Um, the only interesting thing that really happened in this match was Callahan turning on Diener in the design. Not to go necessarily with Dango, uh, Hendry, and Santino, but to get away from the design because they've been having him do different type of deals and trying to prove his loyalty to him. And it's just been, it's not the typical Sammy Callahan that we know and Finally, he turns on him and says he's not going with him. And then the team of Dirty Dingo, Hendry, and Morella. <sighs> Guys, big yeah, that's how I felt about the match, honestly. Two and a quarter. Sorry what I gave that. Next up, we had a last rights match. Casting match. Can't call it a casting match because WWE has copyrighted the term casting match. So it's the last rights match. PCO and Eddie Edwards. Um, this feud began Honor No More um, when they were actually in part of Ring of Honor when they came to Impact Wrestling a year plus ago. Um, Eddie Edwards was the leader. He didn't think PCO was on board and the two of them have kind of feuded ever since. Um, Eddie ended up attacking PCO. Looked like a you know, desert somewhere. And then they just kind of had this back and forth. And so they had the last rights match. Um, what it means, I don't know. No one's leaving. It's kind of like the, you know, kind of for these two in the feud. Um, there were a couple big spots. Um, more than anything, it was more chops and slaps. And the, their, both their chests were like bright red from it. Um, they were just kind of some more smacking each other. It's like, okay. 
Uh, there was one spot where uh, PCO was in the, I think it was PCO was in the casket. Whew. I put his leg up to keep the lid from being closed. And then at the end, I choked slam by PCO on Eddie Edwards into the casket, slamming the casket for PCO to win. I ended up giving it three and a quarter. It was actually entertaining, and it was a pretty decent match. Uh, next up, we had the Impact X Division title on the line in the elimination match. We had champion Trey Miguel versus Jonathan Gresham versus Speedball Mike Bailey. Um, Gresham was the last person that submitted Bailey, I think, and then Bailey was the last person to pin Miguel. It was some all kind of tied together. Um, honestly, being an elimination match didn't make a lot of sense to me, um, being a triple threat elimination match. Um, you had Bailey submitting Jonathan Gresham. He was the, the, the eliminate, or sorry, Miguel submitted Gresham. He, he was eliminated at 937 into the match. And then Miguel pinned Mike Bailey at 1355. Um, I give it three and three quarters. It was a good match. You had Bailey doing, you kind of had each guy, you had Bailey in the striking, you had Gresham in the mat wrestling, you had Miguel in the high flying, and they each did their kind of move set, and then Miguel retained his X Division title here. Um, again, I give it three and three quarters. Next up, we had Hardcore War. This has been a feud between Tommy Dreamer and Bully Ray. When Bully came in, Gosh, year plus ago, he came in saying he was going to be different this time. He wasn't the same Bully Ray as before. Dreamer says, "I know you, and you know you don't change your stripes. I know, I know, know how you are. You've always been that way." They had a busted open match at Sacrifice, and this led to their hardcore war. Basically, it was war games minus the cage. Um, so, you had a match on Impact last week between. Um, Frankie Kazarian and Kenny King and Kenny King, part of Bo uh, Team Bully was able to win that match to get the um, they had the first person so they had the uh, upper hand in this match so you had two guys start every 90 seconds somebody else came in um, so it was constantly two on one, three, three on two, etc. And then once all five got into the match, then pinfalls and submissions counted. So basically, war games minus the gauge. Um, so in Team Bully, you had Moose come out first. Team Dreamer, you had Frankie Kazarian. And then Bully had Brian Myers. And then, Diener, and then uh, Dreamer's team had Bopinder Jur. And then Kenny King. And then. Killer Kelly, then Masha Slamovich, and then Bully Ray was last. I'm sorry. Yeah, so Moose, Myers, Kenny King, Masha Slamovich, and Bully Ray. And then for Team Dreamer, it was Frankie Kazarian, Papinder Jr., Killer Kelly, Yui Uemura, and then Tommy Dreamer. Uh, Tommy Dreamer's team actually ended up getting the victory there. I gave it three and a quarter. Um, it was interesting. It was... A little bit hardcore. No no blood, though. It's kind of, um, you know, you tell me a hardcore war, you know. The fact that I'm a GCW fan, I'm expecting blood. <laughs> nothing. It's like, okay. There might have been a little bit, but nothing, nothing really to write home about kind of deal. And then sub-main, they had the Impact World Heavyweight title. So they main evented the Knockout World title, the Impact Knockout World title. So for the Impact World title, we had Steve Macklin and Kashida. We had Nick Aldis, the, the uh, National Treasure, come out on commentary, announcing he had signed with Impact Wrestling. So that's going to be fun, watching Nick Aldis win the Impact World Heavyweight title coming up. Um, so actually a good match between Steve Macklin and Kashida. They did give a little bit of time. They give it 18 minutes. Um, but Macklin, with his power, was able to beat Kishida um, and able to win his first ever Impact World Heavyweight title. Um, now, Steve Macklin, for those of you who remember him, Steve Cutler from 
NXT. I don't think he made the main roster, if I remember correctly. Let's see here. He last was in NXT in 2020. Uh, he was part of the Forgotten Sons with Wesley Blake. Um, so yeah, they made it look like they had a cup of coffee on SmackDown, and he was in NXT. Um, so when Blake got away from uh, Buddy Murphy, and they broke that team out, they put Blake in a, another tag team with Steve Cutler. Yeah, he was uh, that guy. Um, so he does have, you know, obviously experience. He was in NXT for just a hell of a long time. See, before the Forgotten Sons, was he another team? Oh, he was a singles guy before the Forgotten Sons. Good God. Yeah, he was in NXT like in 2015. 20, let's see here. Yeah, 2014 against C.J. Parker, which we all know is Juice Robinson, and then Mac Miles, who in the world? I don't even know that person. Yeah, he tagged with him for for a match, a couple matches, and he was a singles guy. Yeah, so yeah, he had a long run in NXT that didn't end well, and now he is Impact World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, Steve Macklin. Hopefully Nick Aldis will take the title from him soon. And then the main event was the Impact the Knockouts World title, vacated by Mickey James and injury. Um, Deanna Praza versus Jordan Grace. I actually thought Jordan Grace was going to win this. Once the match played out, one of the best women's matches we've had in a long... I'm oh, sorry, Kushida and Macklin I give three and three quarters to. Um, this women's match was, to, in my opinion, to the level of Rhea and Charlotte from Mania. Deanna and Jordan Grace, two of the most talented women out there. Uh, Deanna Prazo, your new Impact Knockout World Champion. I give it four star. I did find out later after the match, after days, you know, today, Jordan Grace's contract. Jordan Grace's contract was up with. Impact Wrestling, and that may have led to why she lost that match, which doesn't make a hell, of, a hell of a lot of sense for her to lose it. There are some talks of her possibly going to WWE, being interested in her. Um, for her, uh, to me, that would be pointless, but I get it. She's talented, and that's a place everybody wants to end up. Um, but that is the Impact Wrestling Rebellion review. Um, it was on Fight TV last night. Um, as always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. I want you to have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader. Sports Channel content.